Hey everyone, welcome back to our regularly scheduled programming, checking out new upcoming games. So what do you have to look forward to in the month of April 2024? Let's take a look. Gigantic, here's a blast from the past. They're releasing the Rampage Edition, which is what they are calling the premium and definitive version of the original hybrid MOBA. And yes, you heard correctly, I said Gigantic, the team-based multiplayer game with all sorts of funky playable characters that first released back in 2017. I thought the game was pretty neat. I liked it well enough. It reviewed fairly decently, but clearly uh, not decently enough because a year later in 2018, they eventually shut the game down. Well, it's back, no longer in the hands of Perfect World Entertainment. This time around, the game is being published by Gearbox, and I'm actually pretty excited here. So Gigantic, it's like a blending of multiplayer hero shooter with a MOBA. You'll choose from a roster of unique heroes, each with a set of upgradable abilities, and compete in five versus five game modes, teaming up with four other players to control objectives and take down the opposing team's guardian while fighting other players and trying to protect your own. Some key features of this updated release include the original cast of 23 returning heroes, along with two brand new ones. Every one of these 25 playable characters come with their own unique set of offensive and defensive abilities, fitting a variety of playstyles. Clash, the original 5 vs 5 MOBA-like game mode from Gigantic's first release is making a return, as well as the new edition of Rush, which is said to be more accessible, fast-paced, and action-packed, letting players jump into the action quickly. They've also added two brand new maps. There's Picaro Bay, a breezy seaside location with a big old pirate ship, and then Heaven's Ward, an industrialized district with an old power plant, warehouses, and factories. There's plenty of customization, just like the first game, the first time it came out, at least. Uh, you'll build individual hero loadouts to fit your play style. You'll also unlock and choose from a variety of hero and weapon skins, including new ones not seen in the original. They've also mentioned making various gameplay improvements, although I've not seen any specifics as to exactly what was improved and what's changed. They've said improvements have been made. And then finally, the game is cross-platform between console and PC. And following launch, they have said they've got additions coming, including adding a ranked mode, new hero skins, as well as releasing free content updates. The gigantic Rampage edition will be releasing again, this time on April 9th, 2024, coming to PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. I don't know how well this game is going to do. It did shut down the first time around after all, and now it's coming out several years later into a brand new market. But you know what? I had a fun enough time playing. I'm happy to see it. I'll definitely check it out again, if for no other reason than for nostalgia's sake. Before we continue with this month's list, a quick word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Dofus Touch, a mobile MMO with all of the features and content you'd expect from a PC MMO. The game is currently planning a global release, launching English servers on April the 3rd. Along with this update comes a reworked early game experience, making it more fun and approachable for new players. Dofus Touch touts the biggest MMO world on mobile with over 10,000 maps to explore, thousands of monsters, quests, items, and over 70 dungeons, as well as 15 original character classes to choose from. All of this interwoven with rich lore and storytelling as the game is a prequel to the popular Wok Fu animated Netflix TV series. If you're interested in learning more and checking out Dofus Touch for yourself, you can pre-register for the game using the link below. Everyone who joins the new English servers prior to April 10th will earn a free exclusive in-game shield skin. All right, now let's get back to this month's list, I'm really excited for the next game. It is No Rest for the Wicked, a top-down action RPG from Ori developer Moon Studios. The game aims to deliver brutal precision combat as you fight plague-ridden monstrosities and explore this dark, grim world that is entirely handcrafted, intricately interwoven, full of secrets, hidden areas, and randomly generated loot. As was the case with their prior games, Moon Studios is hoping to bring a new twist and new approach to an already established genre, and it seems like they may very well deliver. I got the chance to play No Rest for the Wicked last month, spending a few days with the game. I was pretty obsessed. I came away really impressed and really enjoying the experience. Now it is being called an ARPG, but this is quite different from games like Diablo or Path of Exile. No Rest for the Wicked shares more of its DNA with the Souls series than it does any traditional hack and slash ARPG, from its combat to the world structure and just overall game design systems. So speaking of combat, you've got weapons with attack chain combos, a variety of type of weapons that each have their own independent light and heavy attacks. Then of course there's blocking, parries, dodging, backstabs, and an array of con 
conditional attacks with unique movesets for any attack made while sprinting, while dodging, and while falling. The combat in the game feels very weighty with great sounds and pretty darn impressive animations to boot. Combat itself was one of the major highlights for me when playing the game. Another highlight was the exploration, and that is because they have built and crafted the static levels with really interwoven design, lots of circling back into over and under locations, which really incentivized exploration and looking around, checking every nook and cranny of the environment. Pretty much no matter where I went in the game, everywhere ended up connecting to somewhere either I've already been or somewhere that I can eventually go in the future. Oftentimes you'll see in the background locations that you can eventually reach once you happen to find the path to get there. You'll come across plenty of locked doors that require keys, ladders you can't climb until they're kicked into position from above, or bridges that can't cr be crossed until you find your way to the other side and lower them. Other features of the game that share similarities to the Souls-like genre include how they handle gear and upgrades. Every single weapon in the game, for example, scales with one or more particular attribute, and those attributes can be boosted by spending points when you level up. And then there's the fact that you find armor and weapon shards used as a blacksmith to upgrade said gear. The game also has equipment loads as well, so based on how heavy your gear is, it's going to put you in one of three weight categories, and then that category impacts the distance and speed of your dodge. So yeah, No Rest for the Wicked feels more like a top-down Souls game than a Diablo or Path of Exile style loot grinder. Although there is loot in the game that come in different rarities with stats and perks, and these drop at random from enemies and treasure chests. In fact, every single run of a level, the loot that drops from anywhere will be entirely different, adding a random element to every playthrough. No Rest for the Wicked launches into early access on April the 18th, coming first to PC and then to PlayStation and Xbox. Yeah, it's really best to think of this as a top-down Souls-like with this handcrafted, like, highly detailed levels and random loot. That is basically this game in a nutshell. I really enjoyed playing it last month, and I am super stoked to jump back in. And hey, you know what? It's got co-op to boot, too, so if you got a friend to play with, that's pretty cool. Next up is Sandland, a single player action RPG where you play as Beezlebub, working together with a team of misfits. You must learn how to control his powers and lead your crew on an adventure, exploring the legendary world of Sandland based on a manga created by Dragon Ball creator Akira Toriyama. You'll dive headfirst into a desert world where both humans and demons suffer from an extreme water shortage. In order to solve this crisis, you must hunt down the legendary spring hidden within the desert. In the process, you'll come across many dangers, including bandits, fierce wildlife, and the royal army attempting to keep you at bay. To deal with these threats and make your way around the world, you'll develop tanks and other vehicles using a wide array of part combinations. Some key features of the game include a third-person action combat system. As you're playing as Beezlebub, you've got the typical assortment of attacks and defensive abilities in third-person action games, light and heavy attacks with combo chains, there's aerial juggling, even sneak attacks, and then of course defensive options like blocking and dodging. There are skills and abilities with a progression system that gives you access to a skill tree to enhance your skills for whatever particular playstyle you happen to enjoy. There are even skill trees for your various party members. But then also, the game's got a big focus on vehicular combat as you design, customize, and operate a large variety of vehicles, including battle tanks with powerful cannons, motorbikes that speed through the desert, and jump bots to bounce all over the place to explore every single corner of this world. As you progress, you'll unlock new and better vehicles that can be leveled up with various mechanical parts, including weapons, engines, and suspensions. And then there's also a base building element as you develop your camp inside the city of Spino. In your adventures, you'll bef befriend these exiled people of the desert, bringing them back to the city. And then by completing tasks for them, you will unlock useful materials and features. In doing so, you can watch your town and its capabilities grow. And then besides the open world exploration and combat, it's got mini games as well, like side activities, including racing, bounty hunts, and these things called battle arenas. Sandland launches on April 25th, coming to PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. I gotta say, this game actually has a really interesting look. I, I quite like, like, the vibrant colors and the cell shading and character and world design. It all really pops. Combat seemed okay as well from the gameplay trailers that we saw. I'm pretty interested in learning more. Uh, next up, we've got Manor Lords, a medieval strategy game featuring in-depth city building, large-scale tactical battles, and complex economic and social simulations. The game has you taking on the role of a medieval lord. You will start with nothing, then build up a village 
village and continue to progress your estate into huge bustling cities, you'll need to manage resources and production chains while simultaneously expanding your lands through conquest. In Manor Lords, you will have full freedom of placement and rotation. The game lets you build your empire exactly as you please, with mechanics inspired by the growth of real medieval towns and villages, where major trade routes and the landscape will influence how settlements are shaped and developed. So for example, they say that you'll you'll be spreading outward from a central marketplace. You will build your residential, commercial, and industrial districts following the natural lay of the land. You'll want to establish farms based on soil fertility, position hunting grounds according to animal populations, and ensure access to adequate resource deposits and forests that provide the raw materials needed for your growth. Then, as you expand, competing ambitions between you and neighboring lords inevitably will lead to conflict, at which point you'll lead your people into battle, training skilled warriors to fight alongside the levies you raise from a town militia. At times, these soldiers will need to crush rebellions or suppress bandits. Other times, you will lead them into direct conflict and battle to conquer or defend territory. When needed, mercenaries can even be hired to help bolster your ranks. Manor Lords is launching on April 26th for PC and Xbox. Gotta say, this seems like a really super fleshed out feature and systems rich medieval simulation game. I am pretty impressed with what they've shown. And then also, also impressive is that apparently this started out as a solo developer passion project and eventually grew to where it is now, sitting as one of the most wishlisted games on Steam. Gotta hand it to them, that is quite the feat. Next up here, we have got Dark and Darker. Now I gotta say, although no official release date has been announced, about two weeks ago, the game showed up on the Epic Game Store and it can currently be wishlisted with a launch said to be coming soon, leaving many people speculating of a possibility of a release later in this month. Dark and Darker has actually been playable continuously uh, over recent months on a third party website for some time uh, with the developer regularly updating the game. We've seen various uh, patches and updates making tweaks to gameplay, adding new playable classes and brand new maps to play on. Uh, so what is it? Well, if you happen to miss the craze back when this game was on Steam for a brief while, this is a dungeon diving extraction game with the bones of a game like Tarkov, but inspired by the world of Dungeons and Dragons. You'll enter dungeons, fight off skeletons, cyclops, wendigos, and all sorts of other fantasy creatures while searching for loot and resources, and at the same time, avoiding or fighting other players as it is full on PvP. Then at the end of each run, you either try to extract via these blue portals, or if you're feeling brave, you can take the red portals down to an even more difficult, dangerous dungeon below. The game was incredibly popular when it first came to Steam, topping the charts, but due to a lawsuit its developers going through with Nexon, where they are basically being accused of stealing a large portion of game code to make this game, it was eventually pulled from the platform. Even still, it has maintained a decent player base size while available on third-party websites, although those numbers aren't really technically verifiable as far as I'm aware. But regardless, a dark and darker does keep getting updated. It was a really fun game that I enjoyed playing when it was available. We may very well be seeing it sometime this month or sometime relatively soon. So that is the main list, the uh, best looking new games, according to me, my personal opinion, that are coming out in April. Let's take a look at some of the honorable mentions. These are pretty good looking too because, well, they're on the honorable mention. So, Sons of Valhalla. This is a combat and base building game set in the Viking Age. Uh, you'll be building fortresses and laying siege to enemy strongholds, gathering warriors and boarding longboats as you engage in personal combat, raiding and conquering across England. The game combines side-scrolling combat with base building strategy in this beautiful pixel art Viking Age world. Base building is vital to success. You'll develop towns and actively manage your economy or raid neighboring villages to take what it is you need steadily accumulating power to challenge the military might of your enemy and go out into the countryside to conquer villages, gather resources, and draw others to your cause. Once your stronghold is operational and your warriors ready for battle, it is then time for conquest. You will lead your men into tactical combat, issuing orders, utilizing special abilities and formations, while you, being a true warrior, lead from the front, taking up your sword to fight alongside your army. I know side-scrollers aren't going to be for everyone, but honestly, this thing looks pretty cool. I really like the visual style as well. Sons of Valhalla launches on April 5th, coming to PC. Infection Free Zone is a survival simulation game set in a zombie-infested apocalypse following the worldwide spread of the MAD virus. You must do all you can to create a safe haven for your survival.
survivors. So this is actually really interesting. You can actually type into the game the name of any city or town and then download the real map of that location to start building your survival colony. The game uses OpenStreetMap's real world data, letting you choose any actual place in the world as the base of operations for you and your colony. So you'll establish what is known as an infection free zone, setting up shelters and production facilities, adapting existing buildings to new ones, building farms and powerhouses, and establishing defenses with walls, gates, and towers. Every single night, your settlement will be in danger of being attacked by large hordes of infected. You'll fight them off with melee and ranged weapons, vehicles, walls, and light. And your zone isn't the only one. Your survivors will find other survivor colonies. Some will be friendly and willing to trade. Others will be extremely hostile, resulting in various conflicts. This is a really cool sounding idea. Pretty interesting concepts for a zombie survival simulation game that uses real world location data. Seems like it could be a lot of fun if you like this kind of thing. Infection Free Zone will be launching on April 11th and is coming to PC. Stellar Blade is a story driven action adventure game coming exclusively to PlayStation 5. Y'all know how much I love console exclusives. Ravaged by strange powerful creatures, Earth has been abandoned and what is left of the decimated human race has fled to a colony in outer space. You play as the 7th Airborne Squad member Eve, arriving on the desolate remains of our planet with a clear-cut mission to save humankind by reclaiming Earth. The game features high-octane action combat, they say, as you slash a path through the remnants of Earth, facing epic boss encounters that challenge both your brain and your brawn. Wow, look at that. You'll explore a highly detailed post-apocalyptic world that blends beauty and horror to spectacular effect as you go on an unforgettable adventure unraveling a narrative filled with mature themes, mystery, and revelation. You know, this game got a lot of buzz about a week ago for some reason. Not quite sure why. Can't put my finger on it. Nothing in particular really sticks out. Although I will say the action combat looks really good. Maybe that's why everyone's so excited. Stellar Blade launches exclusively to PlayStation 5 on April the 26th. And then before we go, there's actually uh, quite a few beta tests and alphas that are taking place in April that I think you should know about. For starters, it looks like we are inching ever closer to the global release of Throne and Liberty. Amazon has announced a closed beta testing will take place on April the 10th, lasting for a full week. What's odd here is that it is a closed confidential test, meaning there will be a strict NDA, so you will not be seeing any streams or any videos of the game for this test. And that is, of course, strange because Throne and Liberty has already released with the Korea version launching late last year. Although we expect there to be some differences, like with localization and maybe a few cash shop adjustments, the core of the game is almost certainly going to be exactly the same. Like, at least 99% of it we don't expect to change. So having an NDA seems sort of odd. Maybe they're just trying to dodge any negative press from people focusing on the existence of a cash shop and how their progression systems are tied by some of the monetization. But again, the game's already out in Korea, so we don't know what it is. We know what to expect barring a few adjustments and the localization. Like I said, 99% is probably going to be identical between the Korean and the global release, but whatever. Either way, I am still keen to play the game. I love the look of the world. I love the graphical fidelity, the open world exploration, the seamless fast travel. Combat seems like in a way better place than it was during last year's test. And it looks like there are some really fun and cool, interesting content and features and open world PvP. There's just a lot about the game that I'm excited to try out, even if I end up abandoning it because I run into the uh, cash shop wall in terms of late game gear progression. We will see. Once again, Throne of Liberties Global Beta will be starting on April 10th. You can register for a chance to be invited on their website right now. Once Human, the open world MMO PvP survival zombie monster collection base building survival game that despite combining most every single game genre that exists, isn't a total convoluted mess, believe it or not. They had a very successful second beta with many people thoroughly enjoying it. I myself count myself among them. I really had a fun time with the game. It's definitely a uh, feature and content rich, that's for sure. There is a lot going on here. And uh, even in the limited beta testing, like the game had mo mo more content and features than many full-blown MMOs that release nowadays. Again, think like open world looter shooter, with, that's like a combination of like the division destiny defiance the secret world that is the general gist of it and then with like a layer of survival and base building elements on top so they got a new beta test spinning up shortly this will start on april the 3rd very very soon you can register now on the website although it is important to note that they're only letting in the first 150,000 players who download the launcher to start so you got to be on it pay attention to like social media and their discord channels for when the pre-downloads are available because it's the first 150,000 that they're letting in and they had like over 8 million beta registrants or something. It's pretty crazy. So yeah, they will be inviting more with time, but you got to be on top of it if you want to be in there from the jump. Yeah, again, I had a blast. Um, I am still keeping in mind, however, that as much as they might profess otherwise, there's a decent chance we're going to be smacked with some like pay to win, pay
data progression elements once the game does officially release. But as a game, the content, the features, once human is pretty cool. At the very least, you should check out the beta as far as I'm concerned. Lastly, for betas, we have got Core Punk, uh, Alpha actually. After what was considered a bit of a rough first test, Core Punk is getting another Alpha this month. The developers have taken a lot of the feedback from the last test, they said, uh, doing things like speeding up some of the progression, especially the uh, level grind, and then the rarity of resources when farming. They've added also a lot of quality of life features, like moving vendors around so they're not so, so spread out, and refining the questing system to make the experience a lot more streamlined. All around, it seems like they were receptive to feedback and are implementing some some good changes here, which I am happy to see because I really enjoyed the first test, particularly the combat I thought was a lot of fun. It felt super good to play. It's like playing a MMO version of a MOBA. Problem was they had a lot of pacing issues and progression issues, just a few larger problems that bogged down the experience as a whole, but I'm keeping my fingers crossed for meaningful improvements here, hoping for the best as always. Core Punk's second public alpha is scheduled to begin on April 23rd, will be lasting a full week until April the 30th. And with that, we will wrap up this month's list thanks as always for checking it out uh for this month's games my top picks like what am i most interested in playing no rest for the wicked is all the way at the top of the list i just had a blast with the demo it was like a single level but it was so much fun and i'm so interested to see how big the game is how fleshed out the world is but the combat's a lot of fun the random uh loot grind is a lot of fun the world exploration was a lot of fun i just really really enjoyed the game so i cannot wait for that i'm also interested if i have the time and checking out manor lords if dark and darker actually releases i'll definitely try that and I am planning to play every single one of those betas. Throne and Liberty's beta, Once Humans beta, and the Alpha for Core Punk. I need to play all of these for sure. No questions asked. So there you go. That is it for this month. What did you guys think? Any games on there you're looking forward to? Let me know in the comments below. But that will do it. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.